Welcome to the latest episode of the Edgar Rice Burroughs mini podcast. These short podcasts are meant to supplement the full length episodes that I do with Scott Stewart and Jess Terrell, in which we generally talk about one of Edgar Rice Burroughs books in detail. My name is Tim DeForest. I'm the author of several books about what I call pre-digital pop culture, things like the pulp magazines that Burroughs was published in, old-time radio, classic comic books, old uh, B-movies, and so on. And I keep a blog about such things at comics, old-time radio, and other cool stuff. Right now, we are using the mini-podcast to do a chapter-by-chapter analysis of the 1912 novel, A Princess of Mars. Today, we'll be looking at Chapter 7 of that novel. Please note that I will be including spoilers both for this book and sometimes for later books in the series. And I also recommend you reread this chapter before listening to the podcast, as I will be assuming you're familiar with the events we are discussing. And we get a lot more world building in this chapter, learning that the Green Martians have lost the capacity for love and kindness, in John Carter's opinion, due to their loveless child rearing, rearing methods. The lack of parental love, and the emphasis on learning nothing but how to be a warrior is a definitely harsh, and Carter probably has a good point. The cruelest part of this is undoubtedly the way they weed out eggs, destroying those that don't meet, meet certain standards. It's fair to note that the diminishing natural resources of Mars do seem to require the Green Martians to keep their population stable, but here we see the negative effect this has on their culture. Now, my wife Angela and I are still reading this book together, she was reminded of Sparta while reading this section, where young boys were taken from their parents at age seven to get military training. Though different in detail, it's the same idea of family dynamics being completely a set aside uh, in service to the state. Now, because the Green Martians are weeding out their children of all but the, quote, best, unquote, I was reminded of eugenics, which was a concept occasionally in the news during the early 20th century. I suggested that perhaps Burroughs was taking a subtle shot against eugenics, since in the end, Thark child rearing was warping their culture. But Angela pointed out this was probably too much of a stretch, and I was forced to agree. We also learned for the first time that the Tharks, uh, that the Tharks are nomadic, and we get a first look at their big chariots and the creatures that pull them, which we later, later learn are called Zitadars. Also, Burroughs mentions that John Carter's watchdog has become completely loyal to him. This will actually be a fairly common theme in Burroughs' novel, as I believe I mentioned in the last po podcast. The hero, by showing kindness to an animal, earns that animal's undying loyalty. Once again, I would recommend you listen to mini podcast number one for more details about that. In terms of moving the story along, Burroughs cleverly uses the need to teach the new Thark children the native language to give John Carter an opportunity to learn that same language. From this point on, John Carter will finally have a pretty good idea of what's going on around him. Also, Burroughs emphasizes that Martians are just a little bit telepathic, and this allows their spoken language to be very simple. This provides a justification for John Carter learning the language quickly, and in, inserts an important plot point in that he can easily read Martian minds while they can't read his mind at all. That's it for now. Once again, my name is Tim DeForest. Please visit my blog at Comics, Old Time Radio, and other cool stuff. You'll also be able to find links to my Amazon.com author page there. Thank you for listening. We'll be back with another uh, mini podcast soon. And keep an ear out also for our full-length episodes.